Mm. Well, here we are in the catacombs, in uh, again in Chester. You never believe where this place is. It's in in below Spudgy Lake in Bridge Street in Chester. But if you look around, you see that the this is original stone flooring from when the Romans were. It's not a very good uh, vision, I'm afraid. And uh, the old fireplaces, and over here, you see, if you look down there, you've got the original catacombs. People throwing money down there. <laughs> and here, you can actually see the footings of what propped up the floor in those days. Look at that. The stone, and still. Still standing after 2,000 years, so they, they did a good job on it. And so now it's a place where you can just come and, uh, similar to, I think it's St Martin's in the field, where you can go down there, except you're not walking over tombstones down here. And uh, you see that on view Roman Bast and Hypo Cost. Perfect state of preservation in its original situation. I wonder how true that is. Roman and medieval view. Fascinating place, Chester, if you've never been here before. Um, I do like some Roman architects. One place I recommend you visit if you've never been here before is the Hard Knot uh, Fortress, which was another Roman fortress in Lancaster, just outside Lancaster in Lancashire. And you can still see the parade square there, and also the Romans were very hygienic people. They always had a fire outside and the heat would circulate and um, they also like to build um, baths to give the soldiers a certain level of hygiene, as you see here. Um, I mean, two examples of that in Britain, one of them is Leamington Spa, and also um, Bath Spa, which um, I've been to Bath Spa, and it's basically thermally insulated water where, where Roman soldiers could actually wash themselves. And, Go to Bath Spa, they've actually got um, some Roman remains there as well, so Roman tombstones, perfectly preserved. And um, makes you wonder what an Italian soldier thought about living in Britain at those times, you know, especially being in um, Lancaster when he'd look across the Isle of, Ma Isle of Man and known he was so far from home. But we're going to have a greater look around Chester in a minute, we're going to go to the uh, the, the only existing wall in Britain that still surrounds this citadel goes past uh, Chester Race Course. And um, you see there's um, Chester's claim to fame here. The oldest race course. Chester has the largest Roman amphitheatre in the country. It's the only surviving rock cut Roman shrine in the country. And all sorts of other goodies, all sorts of other surprises. Uh, the Romans, sorry? No, they didn't look that, but I mean, I'm quite a tall person, but if you can imagine that they, yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. There's more like something out of Asterix at all, isn't it? But so no doubt some of this is authentic. That's probably, I mean, it looks like almost like it was a Roman um, castle down there. If you look at that, that is um, turrets, isn't it, for looking, for putting bows and arrows out of or whatever, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, look, the floor was raised above the ground by pillars. Uh, I must ask the guy when, when, when I go out. But this, like any ancient place, is, a, is an archaeologist's dream, you know. Archaeology is all around us, especially in London at the moment, where you, where you consider that um, where Crossrail is going is um, basically going through ancient or very, very old um, graveyards. So when you get on Crossrail and eventually you go to Heathrow or Slough, wherever you go to, you're basically going through ancient, very, very old graveyards. Um, so, you know, you might be able to say hello to your great grandparents when you're going through there, you never know. But that's what it is. And um, I was speaking to one of the engineers who was working there, and he said that every time they hit a body or a corpse or a skeleton, apparently they have to inform the police. Um, you know, it's very unlikely that someone who doesn't know is going to bury someone so deep after 100 years you know, getting. <laughs> medieval forensic experts to have a look, but um, it's a formality that they have to go through, apparently. Yeah, so I'm going to show you some of the sites of Chester, and um, great place to visit. Recommended. See you a bit later. There we are, very peaceful and tranquil scene. Bridge gate and the old D bridge, this is a river D.
you still see that stone, that hardcore stone over there that surrounds this whole place, red stone. Even where we were this morning in the um, Roman remains, it's there. But I imagine it makes a solid, a good solid uh, foundation um, for building on, you know, because it's been there for millions of years. It's not likely to move better than any um, underpinning or foundation or even um, sort of you know, sway structures. They use some um, pile driver, you know, to stabilise buildings. An old paddle steamer there from Mississippi, Mark Twain, the name. <laughs> They're trying to bring a bit of Mississippi here, look. Mark Twain. Huh. Reminds me of Lafayette. It's a, it's a, it's a sort of paddle steamer, yeah. Now it's got um, a roto rudder. Still in Chester, we're now about to enter the cathedral. I, mean, I don't know what sort of stone is that, sort of sandstone on there or not, I'm not sure, but uh, it's quite well kept in places, but I think it needs a bit of gardening done as well if you look up there. But still an amazing piece of architecture. Let's put the town clock, Chester town clock up there. Right now we're going into a holy place. So here we are inside the one and only Chester Cathedral. Look at that organ there, massive organ. I've always found sort of Anglican and Catholic churches quite eerie compared to uh, Hindu temples and Sikh Gurdwaras, which you know tend to be more sort of colourful places on the whole. But um, I recall being in the south of France with my aunt, with my nan, and um, we was in a Catholic cathedral, and I remember her saying to me, "This is this place is eerie, you know, very eerie." And uh, a statue of a man with a crown of thorns, with blood dripping down. Them. What could be more eerie than that? You know, this has been a symbol of our so-called civilization for the last two thousand years. It looks like. Looks like Damien Hurst has been here as well, but that's weird, you know, stuff. <clears throat> what could be more out of context than having that in a church? <laughs> They're ob obviously trying to appeal to a uh, different audience these days, churches, with, with the amount of church, you know, the attendance going down and everything. What amazing structure, I mean, it's... What keeps it up is the arches.
Another one to visit if you've never done so is um, is uh, Nor Norwich Cathedral, which I think was built over 300 years. <clears throat> also featured in that film, The Go-Between. And um, big, big cathedral, very, very big. Not sure if it's quite as big as this, but pretty big. And this is the famous remembrance of the Battle of Jutland, where I think we lost a, um, a young soldier, a young private. I think his name was Jack Holt, if I remember rightly. And he was only 16 when he died. And there he is right there. He, was, um, he went back to save his colleagues, uh, some of who perished at the Battle of Jutland. Photography was around at the time. I think it was HMS Chester, which was that one. Jack Holt, I think, was given a posthumous VC, which didn't do him much good. There's, there's the man himself, Jack. Uh, his name was Jack Cornell. Tell her his name was Jack Cornell. There he is. Sorry, Jack Cornell, the British hero. Died in 1916, the Battle of Jutland, which was a massive naval battle between the British and the Germans at the time and um, that was the year my granddad was born in 1916 so I'll show you how long ago it was. Tried to enlist. A lot of young British guys at the time apparently lied about their ages to get to get out to India at the time which you know was a way of escaping poverty which is what soldiers do. I mean no one in their right mind would join the army you know really not unless it was for good reason, unless it was to escape poverty, really. Come back with your arms and legs off. Not a good idea. So Chester, in a way, it seems to me to be a, a city which reflects different periods of British history, Roman, Norman, and um, very much Roman uh, and later Saxon, and is very, very well preserved, you know, considering the time that's passed. Many British religious establishments these days are. You know, because the English aren't a particularly religious people. I think only 1% of us go to church, which is extremely low. And uh, many of the places are better known as um, for their architecture. I mean, an example of that is Christopher Wren's St Paul's Cathedral. Um, Another piece of modern art, uh, a gorilla this time in the middle of a church. How incongruous is that? Is a, maybe a local artist using the church as a vehicle for self-promotion. I'm not sure. Here in here today is quite pleasant. I mean, there's a um, nice smell of incense around, and uh, not particularly unpleasant in the atmosphere. There's all sorts of corridors in this place. Do you want to go and have a look at the other corridors? You can go, you can go around. Yeah. donation because you know, it obviously does keep does um, cost money to keep these places going a lot of money especially steeples
Michelangelo. I shouldn't think it was very nice being Michelangelo in those days, being stuck up there for hours with paint dropping in your eyes and having a priest down below saying to you, when will you make an end? To which Marco, Michelangelo, I think, replied, when I'm finished, which is an appropriate answer, I think. That's what happened in the Rex Harrison movie, anyway. I don't know what happened in real life. It's, uh, Mike, Michelangelo, I would imagine, was a dedicated artist. Romans, I do know, love making mosaics with marble, and they obviously continue this tradition by putting together pieces of marble and different stones and making sort of collages out of them. All of a religious nature, I might add. It must take hours, if not months, if not years. I think this is a heater, this. Isn't it? This, this uh, church is surrounded by very nice little gardens inside. You know, it's a peaceful place to come. Unusually bits of modern art stuck where you'd least expect it. Window, shall we go through today? The round window, the oblong window, we've got no choice, we have to go through the diamond window. Here we go. This no doubt was um, one time <clears throat> another part of the church which is now a canteen as you can see. Might come in there for a coffee in a moment. If you ever visit the village of Chigwell in Essex, um, first paying the visit to uh, what was Charles Dickens' um, favourite pub, which was the King's Head in um, Chigwell Village at the top of the hill, not, part, not far from the Metropolitan Place Sports Ground, which is now to the public also. And um, that building, which is the King's Head, was, was actually f uh, featured in Dickens' novel um, Barnaby Rudge, I believe, and it was also Dick is his favourite London pub. Um, still got that sort of Dick, Dick Henson sort of look about it, but now he's a Turkish restaurant and um, part of the actual crypt is uh, used um, the seating area and also um, the kitchen as well. 
So it's worth a visit if you go to Chigwell. It's not too far if you live in London. And um, Chigwell is also quite famous because it's where William Penn came from. He was the original uh, governor of Pennsylvania, which is also where I understand uh, Bill Haley came from. Bill Haley in the comments fame, you know, you no doubt you've heard Rock Around the Clock. And um, I think the, the original comments have been back there a couple of times to, uh, to rehearse. Worth a visit. These things were called gargoyles, I think, gargoyles. I think. They sort of put them around the church to be a character, I imagine. Scary stuff. It's like a tap that's maybe come out of a microwave. That's what I'd compare it to. I like things that tend to be attractive, not ugly art. I'm trying to get into the garden if I can find a way in. No fishes, just lots of pennies in there, as far as I can see. Water lilies. Chester's a lovely place. I mean, it's um, very old English, middling, I suppose. And walking around, I've seen Victorian tea rooms. You can get tea. Quintessentially sort of English atmosphere. But... Not too far away, only a few miles away, is the borders of Wales. In the other direction, Liverpool. The cost of repairing this place must be astronomical. There's a new bit there, you can see there's new stone. Which, um, I guess it loses its authenticity when you put new stone with old stone, but what can you do? Something that's hundreds of years old. How'd you find Chester in? You quite like it. Pleasant place, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Very stony, isn't it? Very sort of yeah. yeah. How do you find it, Murray? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Second place.
was some sort of burial ground at some stage. I mean, a lot of places, even in London, a lot of these old burial grounds became what is known as um, consecrated grounds. And an example of that is in uh, Whitechapel, just opposite the Brick Lane entrance and Whitechapel side, there's a piece of land there where kids play on these days, so that's consecrated ground, which I think they may have moved the bodies out of at some stage, or, <clears throat> you know, if they might have been built and died in the 12th century, it's very unlikely they're going to find their remains then. And another example is on the other side of uh, Tower Bridge, where now um, City Hall, the Mayor's Office, which is known as Potter's Fields, which also um, is, uh, if you look in there, you see cemetery tombstones pushed against the edges of it. And they hold parties on there these days, so you know, death is all around us, I guess. They said we don't really don't realise it half the time. Geraniums are outside all year round. I have to take mine in. I imagine it's just warm enough there in that little corner to keep them alive. This is the most unusual tree. I do like weeping willows, but apparently they absorb a lot of water. I don't know what that one's called. Strange. Town clock. Isn't that romantic? Look at that. I'm not sure whether they're mermaids or what. Anyway, time for a quick cup of coffee, I think.